Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. All right gang, so today we start fresh, brand new series, brand new topic. And to be honest, it's a pretty cool one. There's a lot of advanced chemistry that we're about to do. And what I like about this stuff, even though sometimes it can be, I don't wanna say annoying, because I love Ochem for Ochem, and I'm not the biggest biology person, but what is really, really, really cool about this chapter is we see some biological applications of organic chemistry. We're gonna see reactions, and also with the DNA and peptide stuff too, we see reactions that actually occur in the human body and things that happen in nature, which that's like really cool because it just happens on its own. It was designed this way, it works, and it just it just goes, which is wild. You know, there's no there's no hood. People, you know, do you know with beakers and and flasks and things like that. It just it just works. Okay, so this video is just gonna be short. It's just what are heterocycles? What is a heterocycle? So I'm assuming in this word you can really piece it together. Different. So it's like you know ring and different, right? Not the same. So I'm just gonna throw up some examples of heterocycles. A long time ago, we worked with these bad boys. Blast from the past. I'm sure you remember these are epoxides, right? We attack them in basic and acidic conditions. So that qualifies because it's a ring and there's greater than or equal to two different atoms in the structure, right? That's what defines a heterocycle. So clearly we've got carbon and oxygen. That's greater than or equal to two, okay? So, and I'm sure even though you might not know the structure, but if we look at this bad boy, this five-membered ring with oxygen embedded in the ring. This is THF. This is tetrahydrofuran. Tetra meaning four carbons. Hydro and furan. Furan means um, oxygen in the ring, like a cyclic oxygen-containing ring. Okay? Throw back to our carbohydrate days. If we look at something like this, well, actually, well, actually, well, yeah, I'm going to bring that back. If we look at the all equatorial sugar, all hail, the all equatorial sugar. If we look at D glucose, well, bless my stars above, that's a heterocycle, okay? And if we look at something like this, which we will in depth in this chapter, this is pyridine. This is also a heterocycle. It fits that bill because bill of greater than or equal to two atoms because nitrogen is embedded in the ring, okay? So. You can see that you know we have, this is this is a nature right. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble. Uh, we this is a very common solvent. Um, common solvent. We use these quite a bit synthetically. But what we will do, especially what what will lead us into the next video, because clearly this is just an intro, intro video, is if we look at these uh, struct well these structures right here in particular. We're, gonna look at, we're just going to give you an example of these three. This is parole. This is furan. So a little bit different than THF. And this one, uh, her, hold on, I'm gonna make sure I get this name right. I'm pretty sure it's thiodine. I always get a little weird on the sulfur ones. Let me just make sure that's the case. Yep, oh, whoops, of course not. See, told you I was gonna be wrong. It's thiophene, okay? So again, do these fit the definition of a heterocycle? And the answer is yes, right? Because clearly we have a, a nitrogen in the ring, an oxygen in the ring, a sulfur in the ring. But what I wanna do in the next video is just talk a little bit about these three because these are kind of cool structures. There's a reaction we're gonna do with them two videos ahead from now. But what I like about them is that these are all aromatic and I wanna talk about that, okay? So thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.